Alright everybody, what is up? It is your boy Gimzilla coming at you with another Infinite Tuesday, the show where we run the arena, show you every draft I do, every pick I make, and a couple games as well, and hopefully give you a good idea of what you should be doing in arena, what's going to get you 7 plus wins, what's going to keep you getting free packs and free runs. So this week we have a special edition. It is the GVG Gnome vs. Goblin Arena Extravaganza. They have given me a free arena run in anticipation of this great event. They didn't give me good classes for the run though. So Shaman, Rogue, Warlock. Um, Shaman, maybe it's better with the GVG cards I have to actually play with them this is going to be my first time playing with them so you've been warned um, however Shaman in the past like in the normal edition has not been a strong pick so I'm leaning more towards like a Zoo Warlock or just kind of a all around Rogue you can either go Rush or Control depending on how the cards land but let's go back real quick Always be checking your dailies, guys. Always be checking your dailies. So I have a Shaman one, but I think I'm going to throw that back. I get Hunter Mage. So Rogue, I can finish. I had started that on a different draft, but I, Rogue, I like Warlock, I think. I think I like Warlock. All right. Gul'dan, I shall embrace the shadows. I just feel his hero power is... You could do more with it all around. You know, drawing a card is so useful. Even at the cost of two health. Um, if you can get a lot of early game minions, two drops, you can basically sit at 30 health and then use your hero power five times, down to 20, be relatively safe and five cards ahead. So Siphon Soul, uh, easily the best Warlock removal spell possible Ravenhold Assassin, but I think it's a little too early to see where that's at. Hmm. Yeti with a downside. I'm not really sure I'm down to give my opponents a spare part. I don't know, you guys might hate on me in the comments, but I think I will take a Spectral Knight and not go for the GVG Flare. That's only the second pick, so I'm assuming we'll get a couple more options. Power Overwhelming, Great Reach, it's basically like Fireball in the Warlock Toolkit for one mana, so I'm gonna take it, save it as a game finisher, cast it when they're not ready for it. Raptor or Croc, it just depends on your preference. I'm personally a bigger fan of Croc list, but I think Raptor is better with Warlock. Croc's better with like Mage and Druid when you can ping a creature for the additional three, but since Warlock doesn't have that luxury, we just want higher attack. Cards like Razorfin Hunter are good on Warlock because you can use the 1-1. One -one. Since like I said, you don't have a pinging ability, having just extra chum to throw into creatures is always a good thing. Mortal Coil is very powerful. Raging Worgen is the obvious power choice here though. Just a 3-3 body. Puts pressure on. Cannot deny that. Alright, let's go Raging Worgen. Alright. Choices here between Unstable Ghoul and Earthen Ring Farseer. I kind of like the ghoul because of how I've been talking. It's hard. It's really hard to just, you know, sometimes they trade their four health guy with your three damage dude, and you just need that one damage. So I really cannot deny the power of these like little subtle AOE effects and stuff. So I'm gonna try the unstable ghoul in this situation. Probably dread infernal just for. Warlock Flare. None of these picks are very exciting. Magma Rager, lull. You can just laugh at that. Alright, Dread Infernal. 
That seems really situational for a 2 3 taunt. Maybe if it was every death rattle, even though I don't have any. Hmm. Alright, let's do. I'm thinking Azure Drake. Questing Adventure could be a thing. Like if I get some soul fires and some maybe another power overwhelming, other cheap spells, I'll be able to pump this guy up. But he really takes a lot, and I think just a 4 4 drawing a card, threatening some spell damage. Take control of an enemy secret. Now that's fun. I don't think it beats out a stampeding coda though, however. And mind control tech is pretty beast in arena. He he gets the job done a lot of the time. I think I have room on my curve for a coda though, and he's like a bigger board swing if you hit the right target. I guess there's not as many targets in this GVG. Everybody kind of is buffed up for like one additional health. Let's go MCT and we'll see how it goes. Because Warlocks, I have no AoE so far, so this kind of is a really, really ghetto AoE. So we're going to take MCT. We're going to take Harvest Golem because he just sticks. Argent Squire is a decent pick, and all those are decent right there, but. Soulfire, so the newly nerfed Soulfire, one mana now instead of zero, still is the same effect, discard a random card, deal four damage. Great card, great finisher, I don't know, I think it's still good at one mana, although extremely harder to play, because if you guys think about one mana, and you're saying, oh, it's just one mana, a lot of the times when you're casting Soulfire, it's like, on turn three or four when you play like a yeti and then you want to soul fire their gigantic guy that they played on turn four so in that sense it's like twenty percent of your turn or twenty five at four you know All right. anyways math soul fire it is we're gonna try it out at one minute and i think it's gonna work this is what i'm talking about this is like some usable GVG tech. I love five mana for that effect. I feel not worth it. I don't have enough mech like synergy, so this mech guy isn't really helping me out here. But so I'm gonna go River Croc. He's just a better two drop for the zoo shell. Shield master. Taunt. Taunt is so powerful in arena. I've been finding recently like. I don't know. People don't draft enough removal spells that you don't always get the option of removal spells. So putting a 3-5 in front of, you know, an army of two drops just means that I can go face that much longer. Dark Bomb. That's cool. Like, why does it keep... It gives me... It gives me a good card. Like, I would take Dark Bomb over Voidwalker, but I don't see myself taking Dark Bomb over a 5-5 five five Stealth Tiger. So, that's just Blizzard's fault. I would be taking these GVG cards, but, I mean, come on. You gotta take the power card, and although this is a very strong, I think two mana is a lot of your turn. Like I was saying, explaining earlier with Soulfire, like, you can't do two mana, three damage, and play a powerful enough drop. Like, you can just play, like, another dinky, unstable ghoul and dark bomb, and then they just play a yeti over that, and it just dominates you. So, I think the power play would be the tiger. This is, this is it, guys. This is it. This is our GVG card. Hype, hype, hype. One drop, death rattle, add a spare part card into my hand. That sounds great. Beats out summoning portal, which is really hard to pull off. And a shield bearer, who's an equal one drop. But I think shield, this clockwork gnome, he, I was liking him earlier, and he's going to be great in the death rattle undertaker deck as an additional one drop. Spare part cards are going to be powerful, so I'm going to see which ones I get. It's going to be great. 
Cogmaster. Maybe if I was a little deeper into the uh, mech area, but I think right here it's an easy Fen Creeper. As I was explaining earlier, Taunt is just where you want to be in Arena. Spider Tank. This looks pretty good. Cult Master is obvious power, though. I don't know if I need the Cult Master. Just like a Spider Tank would be great. It's just like early game takeover. If I can get one of these early drops and end a Spider Tank. I don't know. Maybe Cult Master, though. I don't have any four drops. And I do have like decent early games, so I can do drop, 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 cult master. That's tough. I think cult master too situational. You can't build your entire deck around like what if combos. And cult master, although he probably would draw me one or two cards, it's really a haymaker to assume he'll draw me any more than that uh, each game, if if any. So. I'm going to take a spider tank who's more consistent all around. Wow. Okay. I'm going to play that guy for sure, I think. I got to at least read it, this guy. If you have a mech, which I have two now, but maybe I take that guy. He's pretty cool. 3-3 three, three for 3 possible 4-4 four, four with the spare part although this guy looks boss I'm gonna just take him he's got good artwork good f like abilities I think cuz I'll be tapping for cards I'll be yeah I'll just be tapping for cards but that's fine every time I tap he gets 2-2 two, two. that's fine warlock flare you gotta get the flavor cards guys if you don't pick flavor cards then you're just not having fun deal two to four damage is that just like random two to four damage okay I guess that's better than these guys blade master is not especially impressive all right let's do it implosion Here I might, this is a possible dark bomb right here. I already have a Dread Inferno. I have like pretty decent late game. I don't know, let's check out our minion count. We got like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're like, we're pretty good on minions. I'm counting, you know, like 15, 16. I think we can take a, a, a removal spell. I wonder if this imp thing does one damage at a time and I could just be like Gurubashi implosion I think the commando just goes the more deal damage effect like battle cries you have in warlock the better because it's hard like I've been saying earlier it's hard to clear minions I'm gonna take a shadow bolt it's pretty powerful four damage for three Oh, that's a great, that's a great pirate card right there. Not in my deck, but that's that's a great card. All right, fairy dragon, Let's pick him up, swoop him up. Ogre magi implosion. Everyone thinking that? I'm sure. Not gonna happen. All right, mad bomber. Good early game card. All these are good cards. I think I'm gonna take a silver hand knight. Just the most power for the mana cost. Six for five. Get two. All right, that's fine. And a second soul fire. Is soul fire that good anymore? I don't think so. I think I might take another silver hand knight. Yeah, let's just take a silver hand knight. How am I doing on demons? I got one, two that'll sit in my hand. That's fine. Let's go all in on this guy. And like maybe I'll have it 
it's that or deal two for two. But I think I already have like some good removal. I have a soul fire, shadow bolt. I have that other random one, dark bomb. Maybe a soul demon fire is not bad. Hellfire, that's what I want to see. Some AoE. Gnome Regan Infantry, that is exactly what a Gnome Infantry would look like. <laughs> one for charge. Alright. Hellfire. Possible. This guy's pretty good though. I'm gonna just take this guy and play him out as like a 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, in a worst case and like best case he's a 4-6, four, 4-7. Four, Alright, and our final pick. Big money, like legendary. Give me something crazy off the charts. Boom! Oh. oh my god, that's so crazy. So crazy. Stampede and Kodo for the final pick. I'm glad we didn't take that one earlier. We got the MCT. Alright. Boom. So, a relatively light GVG deck. But, it had to be done. They just, they paired up the cards, you know, like with the best of standards. So, it's not my fault, guys. So, here we go. A little draft overview. We got Power Overwhelming, Soul Fire as some Reach Closer spells. Something I can cast when like after I've done my plethora of two drops and they're beaten down to 12 health I can just finish them off with something easy I have shadow bolt for that classic warlock removal spell great card a lot of damage worth the value mind control tech is a little bit of a uh, ghetto AoE and then hellfire to slam it down as an additional closer AoE spell a flavor card that we haven't seen yet is the implosion I'm actually really hesitant I feel like even four damage for four. I mean, I guess you get four amps as well. So we'll see how this one turns out. But um, this was a little bit of a flavor card. Senjin taunts. I was telling everybody taunts are important. Fen Creeper, Shield Master, they're gonna pull us through. Twilight Drake, good Warlock card. If we don't get those two drops somehow, and we're just like drawing cards in the beginning, if we can drop a Twilight Drake for seven health, eight health, that'd be great. Coming down, we got just standard, standard late game, Dread Infernal, you know, couple five fives, Stampede and Kodo, four six, blah blah blah. The whole point of this deck is going to be beat them down early, keep playing stuff, go face, make it so that they have to react to us, and we're not having to deal with them. All right. Anyways, final thoughts. Siphon Soul is going to be amazing. Spider Tank is going to be pretty good. Three four for three, and yeah, let's see who uh, let's see who comes through. This guy right here. This is where I'm all in on the Warlock flavor on the Floating Watcher. So be ready. Again, thanks for watching, guys, and I appreciate all the views. Make sure you comment down below on your how your GVG draft went. What did you go more standard or did you go all in on the mech? Did you do a full mech mage and torched everything with these random goblin explosives or? Which legendaries did you pull? I want to hear it. I want to chat it up. Anyways, thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And check back for more GBG Arena drafts in the future. From your boy, Gimzilla. Peace.